Good morning and welcome to Greenville United Methodist Church. It's great to see everyone today. Uh, if you're with us on Facebook, please like, comment, and share. Let us know you're there. If you don't like what Pastor Barry has to say, you can use the angry emoji or... Uh, you know, it's a great day in the bluegrass. The cats are still undefeated in this uh, new year. Uh, the beautiful flowers uh, on the altar this morning are from the Stokes family, and they are in memory of uh, Dr. Stokes uh, and uh, a longtime member of this church. Uh, this week, we've got a uh, finance committee meeting uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And our call to worship this morning is Psalm 27. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. Amen. Good morning, church. Would you please join us as we sing together, stand as we sing, the first two verses of God of Grace and God of Glory. as we say our Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Um, at this time, it's our privilege to go Lord in prayer. and There is so much for us to be in prayer for. Um, I don't know about you all, but this past week, all the stuff that happened, um, it's been a reminder to, to me, at least, that we need to be in prayer. Need to be in prayer. And also, we need to be nice. Uh, okay, I, I normally don't get, don't get on my soapbox very often, but I'm getting on my soapbox. So, Chris. <laughs> and I remember, I'll give you this advice. If you wouldn't say it to the person's face... If you wouldn't say it to the person if Jesus was standing right there next to you, if you wouldn't say it to the person if Jesus, the preacher, your mama, and the sheriff was standing right, right next to you, don't post it on social media. Okay, it's easy to say awful things when you're hiding behind a computer screen. But just remember, these are your brothers and sisters in Christ. These are your friends. These are people just like you. We can have disagreements, but you can disagree without being disagreeable. And as Christians, we set the standard. When people look at you, they ought to see Christ. Okay? Off my soapbox. Okay. Now let's prepare our hearts to go and pray. And as we do, the altar rail is open for you to pray.
Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, Lord, you have called us to be followers of a risen Savior. The King of kings and Lord of lords, who has said that his kingdom is not of this world. Who said that we do not fight the way the world fights. That our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of wickedness. And Lord, your word says that Satan is a liar. His main goal is to deceive and to cause disunity, especially within the body of Christ, and to pull us away from our foundation. Lord, I pray for your forgiveness for the times when I myself and we as a collective group has lost sight that our kingdom is not of this world. When we act like everybody else and forget that we serve a risen savior, that we are called to be like Christ and not like everybody else. Father, forgive me for the times my heart is filled with anger when I allow my own preferences and my ideas of how things ought to be overtake who I represent as a believer in Christ. Father, I pray for peace. I pray for sanity, unity, and we pray that you would just let the church rise up during this time. During the time when the whole world seems like it's thrown into chaos, Lord, we have a solid foundation which we have built our life on, a solid foundation that gives us the security that gives us the hope that the world so desperately needs, that gives us the peace that passes all understanding. So Lord, we praise Christ. And my goal and my purpose is to exalt him. May Christ be lifted up high above all else. May he be glorified in everything that is said and done and how we live our lives, and how we treat others, and how we see ourselves. May Christ be the one who is exalted, and may he receive the glory. Lord, thank you for your grace. We pray for those in our church right now, Lord, who are battling illnesses. We pray for all those who are battling this terrible virus that is still out there. And Lord, we just ask that as we continue in this service, Lord, that you will speak to our hearts, draw us closer to your throne. Lord, remind us of who we are in you and let us get a glimpse of your glory. Lord, you are amazing. And we thank you for who you are and what you've done for us. So it's with this confidence that we now pray the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray as we say as one, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with us as we worship in song, singing, I Still Believe. The scattered words and empty thoughts seem to pour from my heart. I've never felt so torn before Seems I don't know where to start But it's now That I feel You breeze fall like rain From every fingertip Washing away my pain Cause I still
burdens I still seem to bear Or oh, even when answers slowly unwind It's my heart I see you prepare But it's now that I feel Your grace fall like rain From every fingertip washing away look amazing. All right, well, have y'all ever had a disagreement with one of your siblings? Yeah? How'd that go? Not good? Nah. Yeah, that happens quite often, doesn't it? Yeah, I know me and my, I have a twin brother, and we used to get in some, some dragged down fights, and it was terrible, and I have a sister, and he and she would fight like cats and dogs. But I want to tell you a story about the Bible about two men who disagreed. Their name was Paul and Barnabas. Now, Paul and Barnabas were both Christians. They were both great friends. In fact, when Paul first became a Christian, it was Barnabas who took him under his wing and helped him out. And Paul loved Barnabas, and Barnabas loved Paul. And so Paul got this idea and said, hey, let's go tell everybody about Jesus. And Barnabas says, that's a great idea. And he says, let's bring someone along. I have a cousin named John Mark. He'd love to go with us. And so they went and got John Mark. And John Mark was kind of like the little kid in the back seat of the car. So they started their journey. And it wasn't but just a few miles before John Mark started going, uh, are we there yet? I'm so bored. I'm hungry. Oh, this is terrible. I don't want to do this anymore. Take me back. Take me back. I, I'm, I'm tired of this. And so they had to stop, and John Mark went back home. Now, they were depending upon John Mark to help them, but he bailed on them. Now, would you be upset with that? Yeah. Well, many years later, Paul has an idea again. He says, hey, let's go and tell people about Jesus. In fact, all the people we've told before, let's go back and check up on them. And Barnabas says, that's a great idea. I'll get John Mark. And Paul says, no, whoa, 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 whoa. He's not coming with us this time. And Barnabas says, yeah, John Mark needs to come with us because he needs this. He really needs the help in spreading the gospel. He needs to feel like he's appreciated. He needs us. And Paul says, no, do you remember what happened last time? He bailed on us. I know, Paul, but he needs us. No, he bailed on us. And it got so bad that Paul and Barnabas just stopped talking to each other, went, hmm. Now, what do you think Paul and Barnabas should do at that point? Do you think they should start calling each other names? Do they think they should start 
getting on social media and saying, nye, 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 nye. do you think they should say, I don't think you really love Jesus because you don't like John Mark? No. You know what they did? They said, you know what? We disagree. And so we're going to have to go our separate ways. But then John Mark blessed Paul, and Paul blessed John Mark and Bar Barnabas. And then Paul went and told people about Jesus, and Barnabas went and told people about Jesus with John Mark. They were still friends, they just had a disagreement, and they went their separate ways. Now, you know what's amazing? Is at the end of the Paul's life, guess who's one of the people he asked to come and see him? John Mark. And do y'all know who John Mark is? Well, many believe that he worked with the Apostle Peter, and he was the one who wrote, who helped Peter write the Gospel of Mark. So see, here's the thing. Sometimes you're gonna have disagreements with folks. Sometimes you're not gonna like what another person says or what they wanna do. That doesn't mean you stop being nice. It doesn't mean you yell and scream and call them names. It says, I disagree with you, but I will still pray for you and I will still love you, okay? Doesn't that sound simple? It's not, but you know what? We have help. You know where, what the help is? Who lives in our heart? Jesus. And Jesus will help us to love others because he loves us, okay? Well, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, thank you so much for these wonderful kids. And Lord, I pray that they will always have the love of Christ in their hearts. Father, bless them and may they always remember how much you love them and how much we love them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, y'all are awesome. I love your shoes too, Cam. Well, your eyes are not deceiving you. We have another Robinson singing this morning. Your bulletin says Clarissa's going to sing, and she's kind of down in her throat. So Carrie has stepped up, and she's going to be singing a song called Never Alone. Of 
scriptures please take it and turn to Psalm 42 be reading the whole psalm see on the screen as the deer pants for streams of water so my soul pants for you my God my soul thirsts for God for the living God when can I go and meet with God my tears have been my food day and night while people say to me all day long where is your God these things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mazar, Deep calls to deep in the roar of the waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul? Are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Now, real quick this morning, I'm going to tie together three concepts, and I want your help with this, okay? So let's do the first concept, and I need your help because I need you to finish these songs for me, okay? You've heard Clarissa sing, you've heard Denise sing, you've heard me, and you heard Carrie sing. It's my turn to sing, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I, I need your help finishing these songs, okay? So you've got to finish the lyrics. Ready? Oh, I'm hooked on a... Okay, okay, say the second one, ready? Well, you've lost that loving. Whoa, that loving. Okay, got that part? Okay, now we're going to go 80s. Oreo Speedwagon, ready? And I can't fight this anymore. Okay, now, y'all did a pretty good job with that, right? 
Now, what do all these things have in common? Feeling. Feeling, right? When you sing about love, you sing about feeling. So when it comes to love, love is not about the sense of duty or commitment or faithfulness or obligation. Love is about a feeling. I mean, we do not sing songs like, and I can't fight this sense of duty and obligation to you. <laughs> it just doesn't sound right. And so what happens then is we equate love with a feeling, and so if I don't feel the feeling, guess what I assume is missing? The love, okay? So, so, so that's the first concept. We equate love and loving someone with a feeling, and that feeling is not there, we think the love is not there, okay? Second concept. My wife and my kids and I, we went to Gatlinburg here re recently, and I was inside the store, and I heard this loud ruckus and it was like kids laughing and an awful noise. And so I said, that's got to be my, my kids. And I was like, well, sure enough, it was. And so I went to the store and my girls said, Dad, you got to see this. It's the best thing in the world. <laughs> now, when I saw this, I laughed so hard. I mean, I was dying laughing. My girls were dying laughing. We had the best time. Next day, they said, Dad, you have to buy the chicken. I said, it costs too much. Dad, it will just make our family so happy. It's the best thing in the world. So I said, for the sake of the family, I'm buying a chicken. So I bought the chicken. And y'all, I had so much fun with it. I was walking around the store, squeezing it. As I walked in large crowds, every time I got around a big group of people, I would squeeze it and put it at them, okay? Now that chicken made, my, made me laugh. It made my family laugh for a few days. By that next weekend, after we had come back, the chicken was sitting in my room, barely touched. I would squeeze him, and this time, instead of laughing, people just rolled their eyes. I went, oh. And so I'm like, well, what's wrong? Why am I not feeling the joy and the excitement I had when I first got the chicken? Is something wrong with me? Is something wrong with my chicken? And I've heard people say, if you're not as close to your chicken as you once were, be sure it's not the chicken who moved. So I'm like, is it me? What's wrong with it? Now, you know the answer is simple, right? What happened? The newness wore off, right? I can't expect to feel the exact way I did when I first got the chicken a week or two later after I got it. Okay? That's the second concept. That sometimes the feeling we had at the beginning it's not the feeling we have down the road. Doesn't mean the feeling is gone, it just means it's not as strong as it once was. That's the second concept. The third concept is this. I was listening to a very well-known evangelical minister, and he was talking about, you got to know that you know that you know that you are saved. And if you have any hesitation about saying that you know that you are saved, if you have any question, any doubt, any struggle in knowing that you have the assurance of your salvation, that is a sign that you are not truly saved and you need to come to the altar and get saved. Now I heard that and I thought, wait a minute. There's been days when I didn't feel like I was saved. Did that mean I wasn't really saved? There was days that I had questions. Does that mean that my salvation is not real? But in his mindset, and the mindset of many, if I have any struggles 
any doubts, any questions, it means that there's something wrong with my relationship with God. Now, tie all these things together. What do they all have in common? Well, all three play a role in us getting to the point where we feel like we're not as close to God as we once were. Where we feel like, I don't feel like God is close to me. I don't feel the excitement I once felt. I have struggles, and so I think there must be something wrong with God and me. And so if I don't feel my faith, that means it must not be there. And that's a struggle I think many people have as they walk close with their Christ. Now, I will say, sometimes when you don't feel close to God, there's a reason for it. I mean, sometimes your emotions will gauge that relationship. And if you are practicing sinful disobedience, then you're not going to feel as close to God as you once did. You know, if there's a couple that's been married, and all of a sudden the wife comes to the husband and says, Honey, I just don't feel close to you. And he says, well, yeah, because you've never been home and you've had 10 affairs in the past two years. You'd say, okay, there's a good reason why we don't feel close anymore. Because there's sinful disobedience there. But if it's only that simple, because a lot of times you can do everything right. You can be in church every Sunday, sit on the pew. You could shout amen and still reach those points in your faith where you feel like you're simply going through the motions. When you feel like God is a million miles away. Now, there are times when you will feel like God is right next to you. When you feel like, amen, Holy Spirit on me, I'm on fire. But there's also those days when you get up and like, ugh, oh, I gotta go to church again. Oftentimes we feel that, and if that's you, don't feel bad, because it happens to everybody. In fact, there are three examples in the Old Testament of men who got so low in their walk with Christ, they felt abandoned by God, their prayer was, God, will you simply just kill me? Jonah, which we could say, well, Jonah, yeah, you ran from God. But the other two, you know who, who they were? Elijah, right after Elijah had defeated the prophets of Baal, and that's another sermon, sermon because Elijah got depressed and God's remedy was eat and take a nap. That's another sermon, another sermon. And the other one was Moses, where Moses says, God, just take me. And it's not just them. These other giants of faith, let me give, give you some, some names, and these are people who at one point had said either they feel like they're not close to God or they doubted the existence of God or they felt like they were just going through the motions. Martin Luther, Charles Spurgeon, John Wesley, Mother Ter Teresa. Now these are not just little bitty Christians, these are spiritual giants of the faith who felt like they weren't close to God at some point in their walk with Christ. So if you're experiencing that, first thing I will say is don't panic. We all go through seasons of ups and downs. You'll have moments when you're on cloud nine, moments you're in the valley. In fact, the theologians have a term for this. It's called spiritual dryness. And it's a, some of the most trying times in your walk with Christ. But I'll also say sometimes it's a gift because it's often there are these times of spiritual dryness where you experience the most growth in your faith because it's times when you really have to dig deep, where you have to search, where you have to ask the questions, and you have to say, what am I doing? And it forces you to grow in your faith, and when you come on the other side, there is a deeper meaning to your faith and a deeper appreciation for the closeness you have with God. Let me give you an example of this. There was a pastor's wife, her name is Ginger Kowalba, she's an author too, and uh, she was a pastor's wife who 
realized that even though she had wrote Christian books, even though she was married to a pastor, she was just kind of going through the motions. And she said she, she just looked at her life and she realized that Sunday had become just a routine and that she wasn't reading her Bible, she wasn't praying, she, she wasn't doing any of that stuff, and she wasn't just excited about the faith or anything. And then she thought, well, what's causing this? And she said there was no personal crisis of faith. You know, there was no tragedy in her life. There was no deep, unanswered spiritual questions and all that. And she came to this realization that shook her to her core. She said she realized that she was bored with God. And she said that scared her. She said, how can I be bored with God? How can I be bored with going to church? How can I be bored with praying and bored with reading the Bible? And then who do I tell? Do I tell my husband, the pastor? Do I tell God? Do I tell the ladies group? He was like, so I don't know what to do about that. And she was so scared, but she said, what do I do? I gotta tell you, that feeling is an honest feeling. And if you have not felt that, I guarantee you one day you will. One of the reasons I love the book of Psalms is because it is such an honest book. Oftentimes we come to church and we always pretend everything is perfect. You know, everybody's high-fiving each other. I love Jesus, you love Jesus, we love Jesus, woo! But we never come here and say, you know what? I just didn't feel anything this week. Did you? The psalmist is such an honest person here. In this Psalm 42, he, he says, why is my soul downcast? Now, now, now think about that word down, that downcast. What that word actually means, we always just think, oh, I'm feeling down. No, it means more than that. It means to actually say, I have nothing left. I am spent. I don't even want to be here. I mean, have you ever felt that way? Where you're like, oh, I'm just so depressed. I'm just so down. Why am I, can't I just go back to bed? And he's saying that's how his soul felt. And so what I want to do this morning is I want us to briefly look at Psalm 42. I want us to look at some key truths about this feeling, why we may be experiencing, but most importantly, what to do about it. Okay? So the first thing I want us to look at here is I want us to see some truths about this. And in verse 1, I want us to see that we are emotional beings and not robots. It says... As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God, okay? Now, the first thing here is we are emotional beings, okay? We are created by God to connect emotionally with each other and with events, okay? For, for example, y'all know I'm a big superhero guy, right? We, we watched Endgame the other day, and, and I watched Finny War End, Endgame, Y'all, I have spent the past 10 years going over every Marvel film there is, watching it over and over and over again to where these characters are not just characters, they are my people, <laughs> okay? I am Iron Man, I am, okay? So on Endgame, when Tony Snap, when, when, when um, Tony Stark snapped his fingers and then he died, Spoiler warning. <laughs> Y'all, I'm a grown man. And after the 18th, 19th time, I'm still <laughs> <laughs> crying like a little baby. Why? Because I'm connected. This was an emotional event. That's how I'm created. And then when I'm connected to someone, I get upset and I'm emotionally tied to them. Okay? So if that's how I feel with a comic book character, shouldn't I feel that way to God? Shouldn't I be emotional? And so when I come to an event like worship, shouldn't this be an emotional experience for me? 
It should, and when it's not, I feel like something's going on. And that's why I love this verse. It says, as the deer pants for water. Y'all, we, we often look at that, that, that verse, and we think of it as this pretty image. You know, we even sing a song. As the deer panteth for. Y'all remember that song? And it's just a wonderful worship song. Y'all, that's, that, that, that's not what that verse means. When a deer is panting, it's not just going like, do, 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 frolicking. It's going, water, <laughs> water. <laughs> it is like crawling, you know. And that's the image. That's what the psalmist is saying. As that dying <coughs> deer trying to get to this last drink of water, that's how my soul feels. I feel parched, I feel empty, I feel dry. My soul longs for something to quench that. I want that, that feeling with God, because right now I'm not experiencing that. Now, a lot of folks, when they go through that, they'll say, that must mean God is not there, or God does not love me, or I do not love God. But y'all, let me tell you the difference between puppy love and true love, okay? A healthy relationship can't be based solely on feelings. Puppy love is when you are in love with being in love. How many of y'all remember when you were teens and you met that little, and you know, you're just like, oh, he makes my heart butter, you know? <laughs> and then, but the second that goes away, you're like, okay, who's next? And that's how puppy love is. You go from the next to next until you find that feeling because you're not chasing a person, you're chasing a feeling. True love says, I'm stuck with you regardless of how I feel. I may hate you this morning, but I love you and you're stuck with me. That's true love, okay? A lot of us have a puppy love relationship with God. We are happy about worship only when I feel it, only when I experience it, only when I feel God. But the second we don't feel God, we're like, God, you're not there no more, so I'm out of here. But you can't have a healthy relationship built on that because a healthy relationship needs to be built on truth and faithfulness, not on feeling. Now, feelings are important, okay? I mean, you don't want to have a dry marriage. If you have a dry marriage where you don't feel nothing, that's just a boring marriage. But you can't just have feelings as a basis. I came across a poem that I thought was one of the best things I've ever heard, and it goes like this. Truth, faith, and feeling were sitting on a wall. Feeling fell off and grabbed a hold of faith. And truth grabbed a hold of faith and truth pulled faith back up. And eventually, in time, feeling came back up too. If you have the truth of the gospel, this is what the word of God says about God, about his love for me, about what he has said about me. If you have that truth, it stands and will carry you through regardless of how you feel. So if you don't feel that love right now, if you, don't, if you feel dry in your faith, first thing is don't panic. Go with what you know is true, God's love in Jesus Christ. Now, says, um, second I want to look at, why do we feel these things sometimes? Before, besides what we've already said about the chicken and about all this stuff, look, look at verse four of your text. He says, these things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go, notice that how I used to go, to the house of God and the protection of the mighty one, the shout of joy and praise among the festival throng. Circumstances changed. We, we don't know exactly what happened, but something has messed up the worship routine of this man to the point now where he says, I can't be in the worship like I used to be. Wow, does that sound familiar? <laughs> does that sound like anything we've been going through where your, your worship schedule has been disturbed and you feel like I can't do the things I used to always do? Sometimes when, when you can't do what you've always done, it, it upsets you and, and your circumstances change. 
Sometimes it's because you have a personal crisis. Other times it's because of unanswered questions. And I would say not so much unanswered questions, but the inability to even ask the questions. How many of y'all have had a nagging question you really wanted to ask, but you were afraid that if you asked that question in church, someone would say, heathen? Because oftentimes we're afraid to even address issues and ask questions. And I'll just get on my soapbox again. God's not afraid of any questions. If God is the truth, he's not afraid of questions. And one of the greatest things about the Psalms is there are such great questions there. Another thing that happens is our personal makeup. Some of us have personalities that are just more geared towards struggles, for dryness. Okay, let me give you an example. I have a good friend, his name is Chaz Matthews. Chaz used to be my, my, my worship, leader, worship leader. He was a, a youth guy. Chaz was an emotional guy. Now y'all, y'all could watch me in worship. Occasionally I'll get a little hip move, move, movement going on. If my hands go up, they get up right here like I'm serving someone, you know? That's, that's the extent of my charismaticness, okay? Like this, I'm a weeble wobble, okay? Chaz, hands up, eyes closed. Chaz, I mean, he is a full on hippie guy, you know, just like this, moving around. And he is, you know, the, the, the worship song comes on and Chaz has got tears rolling down. And he's just like oh, crying. And so I'm sitting there at times and I'm like, you know what, uh, I'm the pastor. Chaz has got something going on here. Why is Chaz crying? Chaz is excited. Chaz is dancing. Why am I not dancing? Woo. <laughs> Why is that? is that? Was God moving in Chaz's life more than me, or is that just how Chaz is compared to me? I'm more of a stoic guy than Chaz was. Some of our personalities are more. Some, some of y'all, you're, you're, you're like Peter. Okay? You are just, you're going to blurt something out. You are emotional. You sense it. You feel it. You do it. Others of y'all, you're like Thomas. And you're like, eh. <laughs> you see someone crying in the church, and you're like, eh. I don't get it. But that's just your person. doesn't mean God is not active in your life. God is just working different. So the big thing is, what do you do about it? What do you do? Let's, let's look, look at our, our, our next verse. Verse five. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior, my God. First thing is, be honest about where you are and how you got there. Ho, ho, I hold you about that ginger cocoa boba. She realized a couple things. She realized that God had not changed, that God was not stopped working, but she also realized that she got lazy in her faith, that she was spending more time watching TV than anything else, that she had had her, her life so busy that she didn't have time for God. And sometimes when we're feeling that spiritual dryness, we gotta say, what am I doing in my life? I'll give you an example, okay? Uh, in high school, I won't use names, but in high school, we have a group of friends that we always ran around with, okay? And one of the guys that hung around with us, one day he said to me, he said, Barry, I, I just don't feel like I'm one of the guys anymore. I just don't feel like I'm part of the gang. And, and I was like, well, because you're not. You know what he had done? He had got a girlfriend. And he was spending all the time with the girlfriend. So I'm like, you don't feel close to us because you're not with us. You're with her. <laughs> and so, see, see, that's what sometimes when you look and say, okay, am I truly putting forth the effort to be close to God? Have I read my Bible? Have I prayed? Am I in worship? Am I doing the things I need to do? Have I fasted? Have I prayed? Second thing is, don't just listen to your emotions, talk to your emotions. I love how it says, he says, why are you so downcast, my soul? Put your hope in God. And sometimes it's good to listen to yourself and say, how am I feeling? But then sometimes you gotta tell yourself, stop feeling that way, feel this way. Why are you downcast? You are a child of the living king. You are saved by the grace of God. Put your hope in God. 
And sometimes you need to remind yourself of these things over and over and over and over again. And then remind yourself of God's involvement in your life. If you don't feel it right now, go back to when you did feel it. Remember that until you feel it again. And the big thing here, stay connected. Look, look, this final, final verse, verse 9. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by me? Notice what he says, my God, why have you forgotten me? But do, do, do you notice what he calls God? What does he call, call, call God there? My rock. You see, even though he's feeling forgotten by God, he says, God, you're still mine. You're still my rock. And that's why he says, and yet, I love that word, yet, and yet will I praise him. So real quick, what does this mean? First of all, listen to the truth and not just your feelings. Feelings are important, but feelings can't be your foundation. Because y'all, I'll tell you the truth, how you feel will be based upon whether or not you had your first cup of coffee or not. Okay, um, I, 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 I compare feelings to syrup, okay? If you're gonna have breakfast, syrup is good to have, but are you gonna base an entire meal around syrup? No, you base it off of eggs. <laughs> eggs are truth, syrup is emotion, okay? Base your faith off of truth. That's one of the reasons why I love for us to say the Apostles' Creed every Sunday because these are the bedrocks of our faith that you need to be reminded of all the time because even when you don't feel it, God is your Father. Jesus Christ was crucified, buried, and dead, but on the third day, he rose from the dead, and you can't forget that. Second thing, focus on God's faithfulness and not yours or not, not how you feel about your, your faithfulness, Okay? I am married to a wonderful wife, okay? She is very loving, she's very kind, she's very compassionate, she is wonderful, and she loves me. But y'all know there are times I get up, and this may shock you, but there are times when I'm not the most loving person in the world. I get up, and I'm kind of grumpy. There's days I can be annoying, like when I walk around the house with a rubber chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but there are times when I may not feel like I'm being loved, but you know what I go based on? I know that in February 12th, 1995, this lady said to me, she would have me to have and to hold from this day forward for sickness or better, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All that. And that truth carries me even when I don't feel that. I know God loves me. You know how I know? I look to the cross. I look to the cross. I don't have any other questions. And third, stay connected whether you feel like it or not. When I am feeling dry, that's not the time for me to stop going to church or to stop reading my Bible. That's time for me to go to church more. In fact, I'll close with this. John, John Wesley one time was supposed to go preach someone, but he was having one of those dark days where he just didn't feel it, and he didn't feel like he, he believed or anything. He didn't feel like God loved him. So he's like, how can I go and preach to people when I don't have faith right now? And he went to one of his mentors, he, he, uh, Heter Bowler, I believe it was, and said, should I leave off preaching today? Should I just not preach because the way I feel? You know what he said? He said, no. You go and you preach, and you preach faith until you have faith, and when you have faith, you will preach faith. Isn't that beautiful? So if I don't feel like singing, sing anyway. If I don't feel like worshiping, worship. Because you know what eventually will happen? It will come back. It will come back. Because the truth is, God has demonstrated his love towards us. And he has proven it in Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, Lord, we are so grateful that even during these times when we may not feel you like we desire, or we may not experience the, the, the high emotion like we had before, 
It does not change who you are. It does not change the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am not one less saved than I was before. Father, in those times when I cannot feel you, remind me that you are with me. Remind me of the promise to never leave nor abandon me. Remind me that you are faithful at all times. Great is your faithfulness to me, my Father. For it is in Christ we pray, amen. Let's stand as we sing our closing hymn, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. As we prepare to go this day, may we go forth in the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. May we go forth and share the hope of Jesus Christ with a hurting world. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, as we now leave this place, may we go forth knowing that we are loved by you, knowing that we have been called to share your love with others. Lord, let us go forth and be ambassadors of the gospel. And Lord, may you bless us and keep us safe now and forevermore. In Christ we pray, amen.